I'm back just doing a little bit of an Avengers update. Um, I've, for the most part, other than the bases on all of the recent Avengers I've completed, Iron Man and Captain America, and I've started um, just getting the Hulk ready as far as doing some undercoats of base paint. Um, so I'll just show a little bit of what I've done. Um, if you have any questions on some of the processes, um, Feels, feel free to just put in a comment. I'll talk a little bit about it, but I'm making this video just a little bit short today. Um, I'll just first show him. This is uh, Iron Man. So I'm fairly happy with how he's come out. Um, it was a little bit of a fiddly process to do the um, red metallic. I hope you can see, depending on the lighting and the angle, um, it really changes the way the red metallic looks, um, being that it's metallic, I suppose, and it's a transparent paint, so it does reflect a little bit differently, um, depending. But overall, I'm really pleased with it, considering my discussion about how I didn't feel that my non-metallic metal painting was up to snuff to um, to tackle one of my favorite characters at this time. Um, what I ended up doing is I sprayed after priming the entire model with through an airbrush with Vallejo's acrylic metal color dark aluminum. I really recommend this paint for both brush application and through the airbrush. It was actually really amazing. Um, it's very, very thin, and it, 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 it is by far the best metallic paint I've used through an airbrush. Um, and so that was excellent. Um, then what I did is I used, um, many of you will be familiar with this paint. It's like an old, it's a, been around for a long time. People use this clear red X27 for blood effects and many other effects, but in particular it's been used for blood effects by me for a long time. Um, and so I used that and I um, mixed it a bit through the airbrush with isop isopropyl, isopropanol, um, isopropyl alcohol, 99%, around one to one, um, and did several layers um, with the airbrush because it was thinned down quite a bit. Um, and I would constantly clean my airbrush a little bit with the isopropyl alcohol too because this stuff's kind of tacky. It's a bit fiddly to, to, to use. Easier through the airbrush than with a brush in my opinion, but um, definitely still fiddly. And, um, and so now, now at that point I had the entire model covered with this red metallic. So then I went in with the acrylic metal color um, gold also very nice um, and very thin and I did that with a brush um, on the model. At that point um, I did a wash over the model and what I used was I'm trying to think I'm pretty sure what I, I usually use something like Agrex or Shade or in this case I used the model wash um, diluted um, probably one to one with water um, of this dark brown Vallejo model wash. One of the reasons I did it is compared to the Citadel washes, I personally have found that these model washes by design, they tend to go into the grooves easier and stay away from the panels more. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted. And so despite that, I still did get some, you know, on the panels and I went over the golds a bit again. Um, and then I just did some simple blue effects by just working up from a darker blue to a lighter blue um, to create some of the glowing effects. And that really was it. Um, in this case, 
the washes and the metallic paint um, and doing that sort of clear over the silver um, is doing a lot of the work for me, you know, in, in the style of many that I'm hoping to do. Where I think it's fiddly is if you do make mistakes on the red and you need to go over it um, with a brush, the particularly if you're doing the airbrush with this clear red, it, it actually does scrape off on top of this metal metallic paint pretty easily. Um, I'm not sure if it's the metallic paint, the clear red, or the combination of the two, um, but it's a bit of a fiddly process and it's easy to ruin and scrape off. Um, and so I will have to actually um, varnish this well. And so touching up is a bit tricky in this. And working with it with the alcohol is a bit tricky too. So it's not a completely easy process, um, but I did actually like the results quite a bit. Um, so I did end up um, working on Captain America too. And um, mostly I did um, a traditional paint job, you know, just nothing really special to, you know, to do highlights and things, but nothing really special to, um, to pass on. Um, however, with the shield, um, I did for the, um, particularly for the red, um, I um, used the same process that I just described. The only difference is, so I essentially painted this the same silver, and then I, I used a brush instead of an airbrush, and I put it on very thick over the entire shield. Now what that ended up doing is um, creating a bit more of a glossy effect, which I actually don't mind. Um, this hasn't even been varnished yet, um, but it creates a bit of a, a glossy effect. But there was less imperfections. It took a little bit longer to dry, um, but it dried sort of really glossy um, and, and pretty nice, the red, in my opinion. Um, now, the white is just regular white paint. I did attempt a bit of a blue metallic and failed. Um, it, I used, it looked good when I was practicing with it, but I used just an enchanted blue by Games Workshop and mixed it with um, directly with the dark aluminum. And on my fingernail when I tested it, it actually looked kind of shiny and reflective. And I think it is, but I think it's just sort of overpowered by that red that looks, I think, really good in my opinion. Um, and so yeah, that is um, essentially the, uh, the shield. And I do think I've created a little bit of a metallic look. Um, with that, using that red method that I did with the Iron Man, and so um, I am happy with that. I'm happy with the way this one's coming out. I do have to do a little bit of touch-ups on the the back of the shield and around the edges um, still. So that's that one. And then I've just started. I don't really have a whole lot to show with this, but I've just started. Um, mostly, it's around paint choice with the Hulk, because I I trying to figure. I was trying to figure out how I was going to go about doing this. My natural tendency was to start darkest and then work up to lightest. But what I've I don't know about you guys. I'm interested in your thoughts. But what I've found after painting for a while is that oftentimes it can be a waste of time to start with the darkest tone that you would want, let's say in the shadows, um, a waste of time in paint and air compressor time. Um, what I'm planning on do, what I'm planning on doing is, um, or what I did is I took my medium tone um, that I'm going to be working up from and base the model on that and I'll go back with the airbrush and I'm going to actually do some undercoating with some darker and I'll likely handle, um, through wet blending and washes, the dark areas on the top. Um, I could potentially with my finer airbrush, because I used my bigger, less precise airbrush for this, just to get this base coat on. But I could do some of the top with my finer airbrush, but I'm not really that worried about that. So this one that I chose was the, um, gosh, I don't even have it in front of me now. Here it is. Um, I just sort of chose Warpstone Glow um, as my um, to go over the black as with my initial initial coat, and then what I'm going to do is use some Wog Flesh just to darken it up a bit on the bottom, and then um, I'll be doing some mixtures of Warpstone Glow and Mook Green, um, and then some pure Mook Green and even some yellow just in some of the highlights um, to get some of the extreme highlights. Um, that's sort of my plan, and likely the hair will be um, uh, this this wog 
flesh. Um, I might have to relook at that because I'm just trying to see here. I'll do some highlights, but I actually think that'll work fine. I mean, I'm not trying to emulate the studio completely. As a matter of fact, I'd rather have a little more contrast than they have in the hair. Um, but, uh, but yeah. So that's sort of the plan with the Hulk. Um, looking forward to working on this one. Okay, hope you guys had a good week, and I will talk to you later.